Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me this evening for this virtual online art opening to coincide with the opening of my private exhibition at Intel. Um, I feel very fortunate to be able to share my work with the folks at Intel, but because it's a private exhibition, I wanted to find a way to extend the reach of the show beyond the physical installation and to share it beyond Intel and for that matter, beyond California. So again, thanks very much for joining me tonight. Before we get started tonight, I wanted to thank a few folks that have recently purchased some of my artwork. This includes Rosie, Brenda, Heather, Paul, and Sandra. Thanks very much for your ongoing support. I really appreciate it. Also want to send out a happy birthday to Regina LeFay. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, Regina. And also, I want to uh, send out a special thank you to Cindy and her students uh, for joining this evening. They're from Spruce Creek High School and uh, I wanted to thank them for, for tuning in tonight. We have folks that are joining the reception from all over the world, uh, you know, here in the States, over in Europe, and some folks visit, uh, visiting us from the Far East as well. So it's a very uh, interesting experiment to kind of pull, pull all this together and provide this online opening. To give you a quick idea of what we'll be doing tonight is I'll be walking you through each of the pieces that are currently on exhibit at Intel. And I'll be giving you some background as to the inspiration that went into the different pieces, as well as some insight as to the process for, for developing the work. All of the work that's on display at Intel are uh, limited edition G clays on fine art paper. And a lot of folks, when they hear the, hear the word G clay, they're not really sure what a G clay is. Um, it's from the French verb gicler, which literally means to spurt, and it's kind of a modern day lithograph. It's a way of, of doing limited edition, high quality reproductions with, with archival inks and fine art paper. And it's the type of artwork that can stand the test of time from a physical standpoint. And for me, the real benefit, uh, more than anything else, is to be able to share the work with more people. A really great example is uh, Organic, which is one of my pieces, which is right, the original is behind me. And that's an acrylic and pastel on wood panel piece. Um, but to share that with a, a broader number of folks, I was able to create limited edition G clays and sell them for far less than I might sell an original piece. And it lets people enjoy the work without you know, having just to, to have that one piece. Wanted to let you know, you can use the links above to return to this page at any time. You can also start a live chat with me directly with the link above. You can visit my main website, my portfolio page, which lets you purchase some of the artwork. And also below that, you'll see a, a list of links that has the different names of the pieces that are on exhibit at Intel. Whenever doing video online, it's always a little bit difficult to, to maintain the quality of the image. So while I will have uh, video representation of the different pieces uh, in this tour. You can also click on the links above and it'll open a separate window on your computer where you can get a, a closer look at, at the individual pieces. So let's get started. The first piece we're going to discuss tonight is one of my most recent pieces. It's called Napa Valley Crush. I was really lucky enough in the early 90s to live in Napa for a period of time I have a lot of really fond memories of the Napa Valley and of wine tasting. Uh, wineries like Franciscan, Cake Bread, Silver Oak, these are just a, a few of my favorites. And it's, that experience has, has stayed with me. And this painting kind of represents the spirit and the joy of, of uh, engaging with, with the Napa Valley and that entire experience. The, the name Napa Valley Crush, it's meant to have a dual meaning. It relates to this time of year, actually, where they, they harvest the grapes and they, they crush the grapes, literally, and they begin the winemaking process. And of course, there's meant to be a, a secondary, almost romantic connotation to the, to the use of the word crush as well. So again, one of my newest pieces, um, very happy with how it turned out. There's a little bit more detail in this piece when compared to some of my other work, and it took a little bit longer to execute but I'm, I'm really happy with the result and I, I hope you folks are too. The next piece is Lombard Street and it's really hard to know where to begin when describing this particular piece. 
I painted this back in 1998 when living in Pacific Heights in San Francisco. And it's, it's just, it's one of those iconic pieces that I love so much because it's so instantly recognizable, but in many ways it's not, it's not truly representational. It's just the, it's the feeling and it's the, the, uh, the energy of, of Lombard Street and, and the, windy, the windy road and just the, the beautiful homes that line the street and just the experience of, of, of you know, descending down, down that hill. Um, the other thing that's interesting with Lombard Street from a process standpoint, uh, while it's an acrylic on wood panel with uh, accents and pastel, one thing that I, I used to do quite a bit of in some of my earlier work is I would create an underpainting in the complementary color. So when you're looking at Lombard Street and you see a, a field of red or a field of green, there's actually an underpainting in its polar opposite color. Uh, now the idea behind that is rather than just painting a single layer of color on white canvas or on a white uh, prepped uh, surface, what you're doing is you're painting the final color, which is the polar opposite, on top of that its complementary color. The idea being that when you have variations in brush strokes and you have a little uh, areas where maybe the brush strokes are a little bit thinner than others, what you actually see bleeding through is that complementary color and it creates somewhat of a resonance or a vibration within the piece. Uh, and that's something that, that I did almost without exception in a lot of my earlier work. The next piece is Racing the Moon. Now this is my most recent piece and it was a lot of fun uh, to work on because when I, after completing Napa Valley Crush, I kind of wanted to do something that was a little bit lighter on the detail and just a little bit more fun to play with. So the idea of course Racing the Moon is you have these uh, very brightly colored sailboats on San Francisco Bay, you have the Transamerica building and Coit Tower in the background and then as the sailboats move from right to left on the uh, canvas, they actually take off and literally start to race towards the moon. As with a lot of my recent work, this is a combination of both traditional painting methods and also utilizing the computer. I'll create a lot of the different components of the piece uh, through traditional painting methods, but then I'll bring them into the, the digital space and accent the colors, try different ideas in terms of composition, and what you finally end up with really is a composite digital painting. They can then be reproduced as archival giclés, whether it be on fine art paper or on canvas. The next painting is one where the original is actually behind me, as I mentioned before, organic. Uh, this is the least representational of, of any of my pieces. This is also painted back in the late 90s and it was painted by hand, and by that I mean finger painting. I literally created the different fields of color and then accented those fields with a strong black line. Uh, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of folks that have suggested that I might return to that uh, more abstract, non-representational style, at least to do a, a new series that are more, more in, that, in that, that vein. I think I probably will because it was a really uh, a visceral experience to create a piece like that that was not so focused on on a figurative or representational composition. Um, and it's just, it's just one of those pieces that I've, I continue to get positive feedback on. The next piece is Coit Tower, uh, also known as Family Portrait. Of course, Family Portrait before my daughter uh, arrived. Uh, and it represents, the two figures represent myself and my wife, Nikki, our dog, Hansel, and our cat, Daphne. And I think it, it shows something that, that reoccurs in a lot of my pieces, and it's very important, is while my work is representational for the most part, I also take a very minimalist approach. I only develop the different components within the piece to the degree necessary to uh, have their identity readily uh, recognizable. Uh, it's clearly a cat, it's clearly a dog, it's clearly a bottle of wine, it's clearly a, a guitar. I don't take it much beyond that. And of course, within this piece, the most, the most obvious example of that is Coit Tower itself, which sits above uh, on, well, on the top of Telegraph Hill in San Francisco.